And welcome everyone to the Riverside County Board Brief as we give you a brief look at what took place during today's Riverside County Board of Supervisors meeting. My name is Pep Fernandez and we're joined by Carolina Herrera. She's the Director of Legislative Services from out of our Executive Office. And Carolina, the California uh, Legislative Session, I hopefully I'm getting that right, but it just came to an end. Um, what are some of the highlights here for Riverside County? Yeah, so we're excited this year. Our county advocated on over 20 bills and pieces of the legislation. A lot of those were signed into law. There are a few we're super excited about. One is actually going to go to the California voters in March of next year, and it'll be some significant reforms to the Mental Health Services Act, which is one of the main funding sources for behavioral health here. And we were excited to see that it might include $1.5 billion to build out our continuum of care, which I know Tanya and Mike have yes. talked about quite a bit here. So that could potentially potentially be a source of funding for the county to do more services in that area. Yeah, that's a very big deal and very important, obviously, here in Riverside County. Um, there was another bill specifically about donkeys, and if you've okay. driven out in the canyon area, you might have come across some on the side of the road. Uh, but what, did, what was this bill specifically about donkeys and maybe the veterinary services, the rehousing of donkeys? What did this all encompass? Well, I'm happy to provide in our donkey update for the year that uh, SB 371, which was authored by our very own Senator Ochoa Bogue, was signed by the governor. And what that does is it allows our Department of Animal Services to contract with a nonprofit provider, which in our region we lovingly know as donkey land, mm -hmm. to provide, like you said some of those essential services that will help increase public safety in our region. All right, very good. That's Carolina Herrera. She's the Director of Legislative Services uh, for Riverside County. Thank you, Carolina. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, uh, moving on. We also, at the end of the board meeting, we had a chance to hear from the fire chief, Bill Weiser, about the Highland Fire. That is in District 3, uh, kind of in that Temecula, Hemet area down there. The fire began on Monday afternoon and it really took a turn for the worse. So the supervisors wanted to get a real time update from Chief Weiser. So here's a map of where the fire is located and what he had to say about the progress of the fire right now. Um, it shows the Highland fire and as you can see, fire remains uh, north of Highway 79, remains east of Sage Road or R3 and south of Cottonwood School um, right there off of Sage Road. It's approximately 620 firefighters on the line currently. I just looked at the camera before I walked up here. It's not showing any much smoke production right now. We have, uh, a, we have um, quite a bit of aircraft, rotary wing, as well as fixed wing. They're all working on the fire. Uh, the fire is currently uh, right about 2,200 acres, and we are expecting uh, high winds again today. Um, we're uh, hoping very well at the the lines hold today. Do we have Dozer line around the uh, south side, as well as uh, most of the north side? I was able to walk a bit of that last night. Um, and we've had one uh, firefighter that was injured on the line. Currently, uh, we are looking at uh, six structures that have been damaged or destroyed. All right, that was Chief Weiser. And again, he was given that update at the end of the Board of Supervisors meeting. So that was probably around noon or 12.30 p.m. this afternoon with the latest conditions and numbers. Uh, also today, we had a chance to catch up with Mike Walsh from Housing and Workforce Solutions. Always good to hear from Mike. And he was giving us an update on the Catalyst Fund, and that's going to help affordable housing in Riverside County as we partner with our friends out at Lift to Rise in District 4. Here's Mike Walsh. Joining us here on the board brief and just outside the Board of Supervisors Chambers, he's back, Mike Walsh from uh, Housing and Workforce Solutions. And Mike, uh, today on the agenda, there was an item about the Catalyst Fund. So before we kind of update people about where the Catalyst Fund is at right now, kind of explain what it is. So a number of years ago, the nonprofit Lift to Rise as part of their work to uh, increase the supply of affordable housing by 10,000 units over the next 10 years, identified there's a need to find pre-development and other sort of funding sources to make these, these projects move. So they created the Coachella Valley Catalyst Fund that will provide acquisition financing, pre-development financing, construction financing, anything that allows like, affordable housing to move forward in the desert. And so the, they were lucky enough, like with county, we made a $2 million investment in the fund, but Assemblymember Garcia made a $15 million budget request out of the state budget a couple of years ago, and the county is uh, accepting the funds and monitoring the funds on behalf of the state and depositing it into the Catalyst Fund. 
Oh, man, what a great thing. So the item specifically today on the agenda, was it just maintenance? What was it uh, basically today? Yeah, it was basically to clean up some language within the agreement and then basically make it easier for the funds to be used locally. So we had the first go around and then they came back with some comments and seemed like what we need to make it a little bit better. So we're happy to help. All right, that's Mike Walls from Housing and Workforce Solutions. All right, thank you, Mike. Always good to hear from him. Uh, during today's board meeting, we did have one presentation brought forth by Supervisor Karen Spiegel. Let's go to that video from earlier. It was a Kristallnacht commemoration, meaning a night of broken glass. It was back on November 9th, 1938, and it signaled the beginning of the Holocaust, where many Jewish businesses uh, were destroyed, meaning broken glass, windows uh, broken, and there's actually going to be an event here in Riverside County at the Corona Public Library on November 9th, the night of the event, um, to commemorate it at 6.30 p.m. So we're going to hear from Supervisor Karen Spiegel about her personal connection to Kristallnacht and also um, some people that can share their own stories as well and what this means to them and how Riverside County, again, is recognizing November 9th. And that's the beginning of when Jews were pulled from their homes and taken. On a personal note, my um, in-laws were both survivors of the Holocaust. My mother-in-law lost her father on Kristallnacht. He was one of those that was taken and never to be seen again and perished in the camps. And all over the world with all the anti-Semitism that's going on and this Hamas war is to eliminate all the Jewish people. Same thing that happens in the Holocaust. And we said, never again. And now is the time of never again. And the idea is that we will never forget. And with everything going on today and with all the anti-Semitism that's going on, this is something that's really important and near and dear to our heart. And we invite the whole public to come out, um, listen to the speaker. They give you first-hand accounts. Many of them were young children, obviously, now with it being so long ago. But it is a very powerful night and an opportunity to um, learn more about the Holocaust and teach it to our next generation so that we will never forget. Again, that's November 9th in Corona at 6.30 p.m. at the library. And finally, here on the board brief, we need your help. We need you to sign up for Flash Vote. Basically, we want to have surveys out there so we know what's important to you to improve the local communities in your backyard. Here's more on Flash Vote. And that'll do it for this edition of the Riverside County Board Brief. My name is Pep Fernandez. Have a safe and happy Halloween. We'll see you next time.